Yom Tov, that means good day. This is Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Bruck, and you know who you are. I want to thank you for being here on the 20th day of February in the year 2020. So it's 2 20 2020. We're not going to see that for a long time. And I'm thinking that I should probably keep a lot of the bloopers and, and mess ups that I do because this is the third time I've tried to get this far in my <laughs> message today. I should probably keep on making compilation of them, except I, I think some of the expletives I use when I really get ticked off at myself for messing up probably would not be appropriate for this website. Anyway, let's get on to today's message. Do you think that fear is the lack of courage or is courage the lack of fear? I've always heard and I actually agree that courage is when we overcome our fear. Fear, it's an instinct. It's designed to help us survive. But when we let our fear rule over us, that is when we have lost ourselves actually to the enemy. You see, the enemy of God uses fear. Fear of loss is the strongest of all fears. But there's also well, fear of pain, fear of death, fear of loneliness, fear of success. <laughs> There's even fear of being afraid. And when your fears are controlling you, they're called phobias. Courage is how we overcome the basic and instinctive fears that we have. And there are all different ways that people find courage. I believe the best way is through faith in God. Humans want to be in control of themselves and what happens in their life. And I think when people don't believe in God or believe he exists, but they don't think it's really important to follow his instructions, they believe that way because they don't want to cede control to him. They fear losing control, and that fear is why they have no faith. I also know people who say they believe in God and are faithful, but they go through life <laughs> afraid of everything. They won't drive on a highway. Uh, I know some that don't take a plane ride, they never have. I know some that don't even try to improve their condition or, or even try to do something different. And, and these people, that they're, they're afraid of living. And yet, they believe that they are in control. <laughs> boy, boy, you go. You know, the Bible is rife with verses that should encourage us, meaning to literally put courage into us. Verses, well... Let's look at some of them. Verses such as these. Okay, Psalm 32, 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. In Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? In Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. In Psalm 23, 4, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Um, one more, Psalm 27, 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? A and this is just a small sampling. To place our faith in God means, more than anything else, to accept His sovereignty and to trust Him to always take care of us. That doesn't mean we will never have sorrows in our lives. I mean, we need to have trials and tribulations because gold is only made pure after going through the fire. We can be anxious and even afraid of the suffering, but we must not be ruled by that fear. Again, fear is normal and we cannot help but feel it. That doesn't mean we should be afraid of the fear or allow it to rule us. We gain 
the courage to overcome and control our fear through our faith in God, knowing that even as we suffer, He is working towards reducing or relieving that suffering. Suffering, loss, and emotional trauma can, and often does, overwhelm people. We can find the strength to survive from our steadfast knowledge and faith in God, believing absolutely that He is always there to prevent our destruction. Now, faith is not something that God will give us. And the kind of faith that comes from some miraculous event is, is fleeting. And I believe it's actually dangerous because a faith that is the result of a miracle is a faith that can be turned to Satan, who <laughs> is capable of performing miracles. In fact, aren't we told in Revelation a lot in chapter 13 that the prophets of Satan will perform many miracles and that many will be turned from the true faith? Faith is a choice. It is a conscious decision to believe. It isn't something we can see or feel. You read Hebrews 11.1. 1. And our faith is strengthened when we follow the instructions God gave us in the Torah. You can find that in James 2.14. When we choose, we choose to cede control of our lives to God, and faithfully trust God to always take care of us, no matter what, we can be confident and encouraged because, well, <laughs> I mean, who can beat up God? I just, thought, I just thought of something. When I said to faithfully trust, that's actually redundant, isn't it? <sighs> Too many people today put their faith in, in technology or in someone in politics, or, or even a sports figure, or a newspaper. They trust quickly in what they hear and what they see, <laughs> not thinking for a moment how easily those senses can be fooled. Trust in God. Choose to believe in what you, well, will probably never see in this lifetime, and stick to that faith no matter what anyone else tells you. When you trust in God and you demonstrate that trust through following his instructions, you will, I guarantee, you will be given confirmation that your faith is well-founded. Amen. So, as always, thank you for being here. And please, subscribe. Click the icons here. Subscribe to YouTube. Go back to the website. Click the subscribe button in the corner there in the margin. And share these messages out with others. Check out the books I've written. They're available on Amazon. Just go to Amazon and search Stephen R. Bruck. And um, also you can get them. They're available. You can find them on my website. And when you're on my website, you, know, you might want to check out the videos. I have a picture album thing. I have there to get videos that aren't related to uh, my messages in the ministry as much as me. The private stuff, you know, personal things, vacations and things, other events in my life. You might find them interesting. Anyway. Until next time, again, thanks for being here. I hope you have a blessed, wonderful day. We trot and Baruch Hashem.